Hello. Today we are going to understand something about John Donne's poem, Valediction for Bidding Morning. This is one of the very representative poems by John Donne, which establishes him as a great poet of love and also establishes his very special style of metaphysical poetry. The occasion is his separation from his wife and this causes the wife very naturally to mourn. To stop this and to give a conviction about love, he begins very abruptly to say that this separation should not be understood as a passage out. He compares the two with the virtuous men, the separation of their soul from their body. He says that as virtuous men pass mildly away and whisper to their souls to go, while some of their sad friends do say, the breath goes now, and some say, no. This ambiguity, this misunderstanding, this non-assimilation of the separation should exist between his separation from his wife. And then he furthers the idea and says, so let us melt. Here, he wishes to express that just as the transition from the solid to the liquid, that is melting happens, so does, should the separation from him to his wife should occur. He prohibits her from making any noise and says, don't make any noise. Don't extract tear floods and don't move sigh tempests. It would be impurification of the love. It is only the very preliminary kind, very lower love that makes an expression when this gets separated. Then, he says, moving of the earth brings harms and fears, and men can reckon what it did and meant. But repudiation of the spheres, though greater far, is innocent. Now here he strikes a very sharp metaphysical note when he compares the separation of the ordinary bodies with the movement of the earth. That is, whenever there is an earthquake, it always causes, because it is a small part of the earth that shakes and which brings about harms and fears in the minds of people. And then people can also measure it on the scale that how much intensity was there in that movement. But that the sphere, the whole earth goes around, revolves around the sun, and so silently, we all attached to the earth face no harm. So this difference between the lay's love and the love of true lovers has been so beautifully anchored by the poet. He then gives yet another example when he compares the physical, the love uh, experienced by the people for whom it's the physical that is important, he compares them with the love that exists between the, the moon and the earth. The moon, just when it's, it goes around the earth, does it, gives his light in proportion to the light that he receives from the sun. When his position, when the position of the moon is not receiving too much of light from the sun is able to impart only a little bit of the shine to the earth. This comparison of ordinary lovers with sublunary lovers is beautiful. He says that this happens only because for them love is sense. 
and then he convinces his wife that we by a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is but interassured of the mind careless eyes lips and hands to miss so he says that we are so much refined that we cannot say whether it is the eye or the lips or the hands that we are missing then he concludes the idea with saying that our two souls therefore which are one though i must go and they are not yet a breach but an expansion like gold to airy thinness beat he convinces his wife that they are since souls and that however he is moving out away from her but this love will not experience a breach like an ordinary glass will do when it is hit it breaks it gets smashed whereas when the love is like gold the two are compared with gold when two are one they are like gold and even when too much of pressure is given to it for to break it the gold doesn't break but only experiences an expansion he assures his wife that whatever happens they will not be getting separated like gold they will only have an experience and now the most beautiful expression which is immortal in the history of english literature where he takes an understanding from the subject of maths and anchors his idea of the two being inseparable when he compares them and says that if they be two they are two so as stiff twin compasses are two thy soul the fixed foot makes no show to move but does if other does here the fixed soul is the an attribute of the wife who sits fixed fixedly in her place and then makes it only moves if the other one is moving and continues and though it in the center sit yet when the other far does roam it leans and harkens after it and grows erect as that comes home so again the fixity of the unmoving foot is the one that causes the other foot to go around in the world and roam but connected with the head connected with the mind she harkens she calls him back to come and grows erect as that comes on the conclusion being such will thou be to me who must like the other foot obliquely run but thy firmness makes my circle just and makes me end where i began he says that though i am bound to move away i would be moving obliquely only around you and the circle that i am making in my venture in this journey of life the firmness of this venture the fixity the roundness of the circle that i make is just because of you and the last line is the most beautiful line where he says that you will make me end where i began there are very serious metaphysical notes in this when he wishes to say that as all of us begin from god and we all end there with him the purpose of our journey in this earth is just to make an assimilation of the world where god has planted us we all have ultimately to rest with god this poem now should be understood as a 
metaphysical expression given by John Donne. As we have already understood in the previous lectures that metaphysical is a poem wherein an intellectual note is struck to say an ordinary thing, knowledge from the other subjects. Logicizing with the help of the science, established facts is proved. So a very simple occasion of separation causes done to speak very profoundly about platonic love. In platonic love, people do not experience separation. They only feel, they might be feeling for a moment the separation. The world might appreciate it as an appreciation. But the souls of the two who are one, they will only be like gold given an expansion. And if at all, the idea of the two being two exists, then the fixed foot that stays in the intensity, the rigidity, the sturdity of this one will make the other, however to roam around, but will only come back to have a reunion with God. Now, you may put up any questions, if there are, and we may discuss it. Thank you. Okay. Now, you wish to feel that what is the platonic love, which John Donne is wanting to say through this poem, Platonic love is the love not of the body but of the soul. We are all portions of God. We are all from God experiencing a journey here on earth but we all are destined to a reunion with him. While we are here on earth and we may see people as bodies also but true love is the one that does not seek to find bodies as companions, but which seeks to find souls as co-travelers.